Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be unboxing the Sapphire Nitro RX Vega 64. This is uh, one of the best aftermarket RX Vega 64 models you can buy. You're probably wondering, don't you have a Strix Vega 64? Well, yes, I did, and I've opted to replace it with this because uh, the Strix had a few issues with it. It had um, problems holding the high clock speeds. It also had one of the worst BIOSes you could get from an aftermarket model. So just looking at the back of the box now, a few key features, 8 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory 2, Radeon Walkman, Radeon Chill, DirectX 12, Vulcan Optimizer, and a few other things stated by Sapphire Nitro, like its VRM robust cooling, and also its um, RGB function. It's classic Nitro Sapphire box with the kind of machine Android looking um, box art. I kind of miss the old Sapphire days when they had the two girls or the Sapphire girls, which were a lot more appealing. Um, so you do get a brace to hold the card. It is quite big, around two and a half slots. It weighs quite a bit. So it can, in some cases, have some sag. I haven't experienced that myself. So I'm not going to be using that. It might be a bit of an eyesore. As you can see, the box is well packaged with quite a lot of foam to keep the card safe in transit and very well packaged with a bubble wrapped um, ESD bag as well so it shouldn't come DOA. Just have a look at that beast, look at the size of that cooler, triple fan cooler, I think the two uh, outer fans are I think 80 to 90 millimeters and then the one in the middle is 80 I believe or even a little smaller but um they do a great job at cooling. Look at that significant slab of aluminium there. There's some direct copper, direct contact on the VRM as well, which gives really, really good cooling. So I'm just going to flip the card around just so you guys can see the input output on the card. So we have two DisplayPoint 1.4 and two HDMI 2.0. So um, good I.O. for multi-monitor support. Two thick heat pipes you can see there as well. So I'm looking to see what this card can do. Um, I'll flip the card around now so you guys can see the top. Two 8-pin PCI Express connectors there. And wow, just look at that thing. Yeah, two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors. So you're going to need a decent power supply. I would recommend 650 watt or above. Two uh, BIOSes there. You can see the BIOS switch at the top. And the card looks really, really good. And it's got a RGB feature as well. So all of the backplate lights up, or the rear portion of the backplate lights up, where you can see that uh, kind of Android mech looking face thing there. And it's all in all, just a clean design card. Um, even though the PCB is a little bit shorter than the actual cooler, they've kind of cleaned up the back of the card. So it looks pretty well presented rather than just having this extra slab of aluminium just hanging over the PCB, so it looks good. Even the PCB looks extra thick compared to some cards I've seen, so hopefully that will prevent sag. So very, very good looking card, and I've got some high hopes from this. Let's see if we can maintain over 1600 megahertz in gaming. So check out how it performs against uh, Sapphire Strix RX Vega 64.
So there you have it guys, just a quick look at how the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX Vega 64 performs and it has no issue maintaining over 1600MHz on the core which is nice to see. But this does come at a cost, you can see an increase in power consumption by about 50 watts. so there is some sacrifice but you do gain on average around about 5 frames per second at these clocks so all in all, decent boost. Anyway guys that's pretty much it for me, hopefully you enjoyed the video.